because I, I didn't know I had to be all, you know, cool and calm and collective with CTS. I actually had, I cussed out the CTS worker the first thing, time we talked, I think, because I didn't like social work guys. Child Protective Services and when Tonight we have a co-host, a special co-host. Um, her name is Erin Carranza. She's a mother, she's an activist, and she's a uh, CPS victim. Uh, Cynthia, our regular co-host, is under the weather, uh, so please keep her in your prayers, and hopefully she'll be back with us next week on the radio. Good evening, Erin. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing good, good, good. Are you ready to take some calls? Absolutely, I am ready Let, to be here. Okay, let's go right to the calls. Let's talk to Ruben from California. Ruben, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Man, how you doing, sir? I got a question and a story to tell. I'll start with the story real quick because I'm not in too much time. So first of all, uh, I got a CTS case because of my baby mama. She's using drugs. When uh, I didn't know she was using drugs uh, before the baby was born because she didn't live with me. She lived at her mother's house in Sacramento. So from there, the baby came out dirty. Uh, I didn't even know about CPS because I guess they talked to her. So she's the one that got us on the CPS case. So from there, I volunteered to do services because I didn't know I could have not had, I didn't have to do it. So from there, uh, you know, uh, they wrapped me up in their claws and they got me involved because I, I didn't know I had to be all, you know, cool and calm and collective with CPS. I actually had, I cussed out the CPS worker the first thing, time we talked, I think, because I didn't like social work guys. So from there, they used my anger against me. Mind you, we had court recently because the lady didn't agree. I didn't agree with the mom having visits with my son like that, like him having to stay at the grandma's house all the time. So the, the social worker didn't like that, so she took it court side. Took it court side, then from there, mind you, they had court without me one day for the, the I, think, I think it's the detention hearing. <laughs> Uh, for, uh, for the detention hearing. So from there, uh, they had court without me, and then I guess they, they put off court for the next day, I guess, for the detention hearing or something. Mind you, I never got my paperwork or the detention packet telling me what I was going to court for. The judge never read my rights. He never told me if I understood everything that I understood. Then from there, uh, you know, they removed my son. The, he wasn't in my care at that time. I had just took him back to uh, the grandma's house, so you know, they took him out of my care, and then I didn't know what was going on because I just heard some stuff removed, and then that's it. And then I was just stuck, like, well, what's going on? So then from this whole time, these people have been abusing their power or whatever, but it's like I don't know what's going on. I mean, I know the system, but I'll never know the CPS system. So from there, it, it, they're trying to hurry up with the court process, I've seen. And then I didn't understand. My, my attorney didn't tell me I could contest the uh, petition. She didn't tell me this until I started doing my research. I started looking at your videos, and I started doing this. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? You know, there's something wrong here. So when they were going to have the jurisdiction court hearing, I guess, uh, they were, I told them that, no, 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 I told them, hold on. I said, I want to contest to the, to the uh, to these allegations against me because – you know, the attorney had a whole month to tell me something she never did. So now I'm in the process of these people are using my anger against me. They say they, that my son's at substantial risk of abuse, neglect, or whatever because of my anger problems. And mind you, I'm not the one on the case. I just volunteered to do the, pro the services, and then that's how they got me on there. So now I've, I've, I've been doing what I got to do, but I haven't been. I just, I barely. Man, as you know, there's so much going on. Like, these people just terminated my visits. The social worker just terminated my visits. Uh, she said because of the incident that happened. I'm like, well, I mean, so what's going on? I thought I had my virtual visits because they took my supervised visits for me because they called CPS on me at the Sacramento office because the lady, I felt like they're kind of like, you know, prejudiced because, you know, like, like I said, I just think they're prejudiced because my son started walking towards the other way and I went to grab him and she said, you go over there by the wall. I'm going to terminate your visit. So I said, how you going to terminate my business when I'm following my son? So because I was I was talking back to her, she terminated my business. These people have been abusing me since the day, since this uh, case started.
started, but the way that they, I'm talking, I'm not a lawyer, none, but the whole petition paperwork, I done caught them and they got dates messed up. They they did the, the how they did, had the court be, uh, without me being there. Mm-hmm. You know, they trying to put those dates in the next day that, that, that they, mm-hmm. me and my son, they're trying to put them together. There's so much going on with this case that, you know what? I well, Ruben, let me, let, me, let me interrupt here for uh-huh. a second. What is uh, the question you wanted to ask me? The question is going to be, how can I go about them, you know, how can I go about, uh, you know, trying to, because they suspended my visit. So it's like, you know, my attorneys, they're not, I trying to get rid of my attorneys and I'm, cause I need help. And then they, the, the judge said, now I feel like she's the representative, right? So I was like, man, so how can I ask for help or a guidance in them if the judge is not letting me get rid of the attorneys I had? So I, I mean, I'm asking to see, well, what can I do about my suspension and so on? Because obviously, the 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 um the lawyer I has is like she I mean I mean I got stuff recorded if you hear this you'd be surprised at what you but I caught these people telling me okay and well, it's ho- like, hold on you know, hold on Ruben hold on slow down a second mm-hmm. first okay. of all let me say this in California if you tape record somebody without them knowing it's a crime all right yeah my cousin was recording me because I was I and was you talking you can never use it in any court proceeding. So mm-hmm. I, right. I, I would advise you not to do that. But let me get down I to you. I learned that the hard you, way. Let yeah. me get your, talk to you about your real question. So if you mm-hmm. and your attorney aren't getting along, in California, you have the right to have what's called a Marsden hearing. And at that Marsden hearing, you can explain to the judge why you have a legal conflict of interest with the attorney. You're probably not going to be able to get a new attorney if you say the attorney's not qualified because typically by the fact that that attorney is on the panel and is being appointed to uh, uh, clients, she's qualified. So you have to sh- tell the judge another reason, and that other reason might be a conflict of interest. But you have to explain that to them. You mentioned my videos um, on YouTube mm-hmm. that you've watched. I have a video out there on how to get a new attorney, a new court-appointed attorney. I think I've seen that one. Yeah, so, uh, and and it's supposed to have links in it to forms that Mm -hmm. you can use if you want to have a Marsden hearing. The the thing is that I explained to the the judge, because we had a, I guess we had a goal, like just us, me, and the judge, and the attorney, I guess I had to separate from the court because I told them I didn't, you know, I didn't want her representing me. I, I explained everything that she never did for me, what she didn't do for me, like she didn't have no, like I explained everything down to the T. But then he said, well, who, she, he told the, her to tell the lady, the judge told the lady, uh, my attorney, to tell her like her qualifications or something. So she said this, this and that, and then whatever she's trying to say, but then the, the uh, judge was like, uh, uh, you might know him too, Judge Davis out of Sacramento. We don't, don't want to know ma- mention any names. You know. Okay, okay, my bad, my bad. So, um, with the judge, he, uh, you know, he sided with her and said, "Well, oh, I feel like she's representing you." Cool. I said, "Wow." I said, "Okay." I'm like, "All right." Okay, Ruben. I, you know, I, I, Ruben. I got, Ruben, stop I got, for um, a second. Stop. All right. All right. <laughs> Ruben. Um, I was gonna tell <laughs> him to <laughs> slow down. <laughs> Go ahead, Ben. Sorry, Ben. Ruben, we we don't have a lot of time before our first commercial break. Okay, this is live radio, so I got to tell you this. There's a difference between telling a judge that the person's not qualified and, judge, we have a conflict of interest, all right? Now, you might have a conflict of interest with this attorney. You might want to do a little research on it or talk to an attorney in your area. You know, Google knows all, right? So research that and watch my video again because I think I I, I gave step-by-step directions about how to get a new court-appointed attorney in a CPS case in California. So I need you to, to follow that. The argument that she's not qualified is a weak argument strategically. Mm-hmm. Okay, so lose that argument. There might be other reasons that you have uh, that you deserve or need a new court-appointed attorney. And you have to watch my video and you have to come up with some issues that are, quote, conflicts of interest, unquote. Yeah. All right. Sorry to come to off spot. Uh, with, with Ruben, I also wanted to tell you that I'm in the same situation that you are. The best thing you could Two minutes. do is get an attorney and keep your mouth shut and let your attorney do the talking for you because you're going to get yourself into trouble. 
Okay, I got to on the twenty fifth. Right? I just hired. They attorney. don't. They don't like to be told something by someone who is not an attorney. Not you know. Not a, they don't like to, to hear that. So you need to get yourself a yeah. lawyer like Finn, and keep your mm-hmm. mouth shut and keep quiet and let your attorney do the talking. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, and then because I got I got man trial coming up, and I'm just stressed out because uh, they're trying to take my kid from me. They they took him without really having nothing on me. I mean, my anger that I mean that they that's did they have a warrant? No, they had no warrant, nothing. They just removed him. He wasn't even in my care. He was with the grandma. Hey, Ruben, I I mm-hmm. you know would also recommend that you make some calls, try to find a, an mm-hmm. attorney that might be able to give you some advice or you know a I might have to go pro se. No, don't do that. That's a no. really bad strategy, Ruben. Ruben, my uh-huh. Ruben, my office telephone number is eight 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 six five eight two. Call me tomorrow. Uh, I won't be in the office, but leave a message. I'll call you back. I got to talk to you some more about what you need to do on this case so that you can protect your rights. Okay, Ruben. Mm-hmm.